So in this um, first preparation video, we're just going to look at uh, different uh, types of circulatory systems and make a comparison uh, between them. We're going to look at the circulatory system in uh, an insect, uh, a fish, an earthworm, um, an amphibian, and then a human. Um, as we go through the different systems, uh, we need to be um, conscious of you know the advantages and disadvantages of each type of circulatory system. <clears throat> so the first um, thing we're going to do is just uh, go through the basic components of a circulatory system and uh, discuss um, to the, the two types of circulatory system that you can have. Uh, which is a double circulatory system and a single circulatory system. And on top of that then, um, a circulatory system can either be open or closed. So uh, it's those um, four things that we're going to look at uh, initially in this video. Okay, so uh, what uh, is a circulatory system? Well, to answer that, we need to look at the, the components, really, of a circulatory system. So every circulatory system, no matter what uh, or how complex it is, uh, it'll always have a pump. OK, now uh, the pump uh, is often called a heart. And as you'll see, um, the complexity of the hearts in different organisms varies. OK, with mammals having the most complex heart. Um, the second thing a circulatory system has uh, is uh, a series of tubes. Um, and those tubes are often called blood vessels. Now, in a later video, we're going to look at blood vessels because there are uh, five different types of blood vessels that you need to know about. Uh, and again, um, the 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 types and the number of blood vessels in organisms differ um, with humans having uh, the most complex types of blood vessels and uh, the third component uh, is a fluid now very often that fluid is called blood okay but uh, it's not called blood in all organisms okay but uh, nonetheless there's a fluid in each circulatory system so there's the components uh, of it. Now, in order to understand what a circulatory system is, we need to understand um, this term double circulatory system and single circulatory system. Now, basically, those terms uh, relate to the arrangement and layout, if you like, of the heart and the blood vessels. Um, you'll understand that more once we start looking at images of circulatory systems. But just for now, you need to know uh, the definition of a double circulatory system uh, and that uh, of a single one. So if I just write that in for you. OK, so I've written in the definitions then of the double and the single circulatory system. Uh, with a double, what happens is that blood will pass through the heart twice for each circuit of the body. With the single circulatory system, blood passes through the heart only once for each circuit of the body. So like I said earlier, um, I don't expect you to fully understand those definitions at the moment because we do need to look at um, the layout of circulatory systems. But you need to, to, to know those definitions. OK, the next thing that we can do is classify whether a circulatory system is open or closed. So if you have um, an open circulatory system, uh, what's basically happening here is uh, the blood will actually leave the blood vessels that it's travelling in. OK, now... Uh, the insect uh, is an example of an organism having an open circulatory system. So if I just draw a very simple diagram for the moment, 
uh, to help compare between open and circulatory system. If uh, the box here is the heart and the vessels coming out of that heart are the blood vessels, what happens is the blood vessels don't meet. So there's a big gap between the vessels and then uh, the blood can actually pour out of the vessels and they go into what's known as a hemocele or a body cavity. So that's an open circulatory system where the blood actually leaves uh, the blood vessels. Uh, with a closed circulatory system, uh, which occurs in uh, humans and fish uh, and amphibians as well, uh, and earthworms actually, um, the blood vessels are ultimately joined. So if we have a basic heart here, the blood vessels come around like so. And then uh, they're actually connected by a series of special blood vessels called capillaries. Okay, so in a closed circulatory system, the, the blood is kept within the blood vessels at all times. And uh, there's uh, a lot of advantages to a closed circulatory system compared to an open one, uh, which we'll discuss uh, shortly. Okay, so we're going to look in detail now at um, an open um, single circulatory system, which is found in insects. Um, so uh, I want to go through this diagram um, and maybe draw a couple more of my own to help you understand how this um, system works. Uh, but basically, if we if we look at the insect uh, down the bottom here, uh, what you've got um, is what's known as a dorsal vessel. Now, dorsal means back. OK, so it run, runs along the back of the insect. And um, every now and again, you get uh, a swelling in that blood vessel, which acts as a very simple heart. So you've got multiple hearts running down the length of the insect, uh, which is just really sort of swellings within a, within a blood vessel. OK, now, if we look at the top diagram, what we what that is showing is just a section through the insect. So we've cut the insect down that way and we're looking um, face on here at the heart or the pump and the blood vessels here, which run from the dorsal vessel right down to the ventral. Uh, ventral means uh, underside. So here would be the ventral uh, surface of the insect. So the blood vessels run right around uh, the body of the insect. So uh, one thing that you can see now is the blood vessels do not meet. That's what makes it an open circulatory system. And the body cavity, as it's called, all this region here is called a hemocele. OK, and there should be an A in there for the spelling, hemocele. Um, so this, this is where blood now actually pours out into the body cavity or hemocele. Within the body cavity, you're going to have the cells that make up uh, the organism. So all these square boxes I'm drawing, I'm trying to represent the, a mass of cells that are actually found in this region of the insect. OK, so there's the open aspect of the circulatory system. Um, the pump here, or the heart, um, has a number of um, valves to it. So there's a valve here just at the exit of the heart. There'll be one on each side. OK, and then it has these things called um, an ostium. Now that's singular. Plural would be ostia. OK, now these ostia um, are actually essential um, for the blood returning back to the heart. You can just see some arrows here 
a uh, little bit faint, but those arrows actually point into a to an a, a ostium there. So this is the the general layout of the open circulatory system. So what happens is this pump here, uh, it'll contract and uh, its volume will uh, decrease. So that means it'll get um, a, a slightly higher pressure and it'll force the blood out of the heart and around the blood vessels in the same direction. Okay, so both the, the left and the right side here, blood is flowing downwards towards the haemocele. And once the blood gets to the haemocele, it passes out into the um, body cavity and nutrients can then diffuse into the body cells. Okay, just want to remind you at this point that um, in insects, oxygen is not transported uh, via the circulatory system. That's transported by the tracheal system. So, as the blood enters the haemocele, nutrients diffuse into the uh, cells. And then, um, the blood has to return back to the heart. So, the way it does that is the blood will enter via these ostia and actually go back into the heart. Now these ostia are actually like valves. Um, so when the heart actually contracts, the ostia cl close to prevent blood coming out of those holes and so direct it into the blood vessels. But when the heart relaxes, the blood is going to be sucked back in. So the valve actually uh, opens when the heart relaxes. So that's how the blood returns back to the heart. Now, um, the problem uh, with this type of circulatory system is down to pressure. Okay. Now, a circulatory system is there to pump a fluid around the body. And for most organisms, the blood has to travel very fast. Okay, so the blood speed, also known as the blood velocity, must be fast. Now, the only way to actually pump blood fast is to have a high pressure. Okay, now, when you have an open circulatory system, the pressure is low, very low. It's very much like having a hole in a tyre. All right, if a tyre has got a puncture, the pressure in that tyre is very, very low, and that's why it sort of comes soft. So, with um, an insect, the actual blood flow is slow. Now, that is a disadvantage because you're not getting uh, nutrients flowing rapidly to the tissues. However, with an insect, it's not too much of a problem because the oxygen that the insect needs and would need very rapidly is actually transported by the tracheal system. So for an insect, the fact that the blood flow is slow is not too much of a problem because um, it gets its oxygen via the tracheal system. So this this is a major issue here about pressure and we'll be discussing it further uh, when we talk about the other circulatory systems. All right, so um, we shall be returning uh, to that. Okay, um, so that really is the single circulatory system that's open. And uh, we'll move on now to the next sort of level of circulatory system. We're going to move up in complexity and we're going to look at the uh, earthworm. Right, <clears throat> so this is the, um, the earthworm circulatory system now. Um, this time it's going to be a closed uh, circulatory system. Um, and it's uh, still going to be single. So if we go to this diagram on the far left, um, 
what I want to point out is that um, the circulatory system of the ins of the earthworm has uh, five. Uh, in this diagram, they're called accessory hearts, but very often they're called uh, pseudo hearts. Okay. Uh, again, it's just swelling of blood vessels which act as a heart. So it's a very basic, simple heart. But you've got um, a main dorsal blood vessel here running along the back of the animal. And you also have a ventral one uh, which runs along the underside around about there. So the pseudo hearts here are responsible for pumping blood from the dorsal vessel down to the ventral vessel. Okay. And you have a main heart here which uh, involves pumping blood along the dorsal vessel uh, and bringing blood back from the ventral vessel back up to the dorsal vessel. So it runs in, in like a circuit uh, in a one-way direction there. Okay. So if we look at this diagram on um, the right, uh, here's our pseudo hearts again. Uh, they call lateral hearts here, but uh, if you just call them pseudo hearts. Uh, we can see that when the heart pumps, blood travels out of the heart in one direction and goes all the way around to um, a set uh, a network of capillaries here. So this is where the circulatory system is now closed, so blood doesn't sort of leave the, the blood vessels. So these capillaries are down by the ventral uh, vessel, okay, and then blood is pumped back to the heart um, via another blood vessel straight back up to the, uh, the heart and the dorsal uh, vessel. So you've got this complete single circuit of blood flowing uh, in one direction uh, all the way around. Okay, so this uh, this circulatory system is a little bit more efficient compared to the insect because because it's closed, uh, you actually have a, a higher pressure, um, which means that the blood flow uh, is faster. That's just compared now to the insect. Okay, so if we <coughs> have a little quick comparison here's the insect again on the the left you can see that blood is leaving the heart in opposite directions it goes through blood vessels and then into the hemocele here uh, and then through the, the the body tissues with a closed circulatory system in the earthworm that hemocele is not there you actually have these capillaries which contain the blood uh, within the vessels. So that's your uh, basic um, closed single circulatory system. Um, again, we can adapt this type of circulatory system to be more efficient. Um, and that occurs uh, in the fish. They have a closed single circulatory system. But... Uh, they have more developed hearts, uh, more developed blood vessels, and of course the, the fish have gills which oxygenate the blood. Uh, so we have to take that into consideration as well. Uh, with the earthworm, if you remember, um, oxygen just diffuses across its body surface into the blood. So with the, with the fish then, it's still closed and single, but it's going to be a little bit more complicated, a little bit more efficient at uh, transporting um, oxygen. So the, uh, the fish circulatory system now. A uh, couple of points here. Uh, as I've said, it's closed. Uh, it's a single. But this third point, um, this is where there's a, a major difference between the earthworm and the fish. The fish has um, a, a more conventional, more sophisticated heart um, with two chambers. Okay, so that's where I want to start is to look at the heart. Uh, so here it is. 
okay now the two chambers this one here is the top one even though it looks at the bottom it's actually the top chamber and it's called the atrium and then this lower chamber here is called the ventricle okay so it's a two chambered heart uh, it also has heart valves here now those valves and there's another one here the heart valves will actually ensure that the blood flows in one direction only okay so for example when this top chamber the atrium contracts the valve here will shut to prevent what's known as backflow into the blood vessel okay so these heart valves are very important the other thing you can see is uh, this dark region here and here that's known as the wall of the atrium or the wall of the ventricle and with the ventricle we say it has a thick muscular wall now um, the reason why it's thicker than that of the atrium is because the ventricle has to pump blood all the way around the body of the fish and in order to move that blood uh, as I've said previously you need a high pressure so when that ventricle contracts it creates a high pressure creates uh, a high pressure so that means um, this part of the circulatory system here this blood vessel here that's the blood vessel that will have the highest pressure uh, because it's the one right next to the ventricle all right so that's the the heart um, the ventricle walls the atrial walls the valves and the pressure that's actually generated so the highest pressure is here that's going to be then the fastest uh, blood flow uh, in that region there so on the face of it um, it's it's a step up from the earthworm but it still has its problems and it's the problems now that I want to look at um, the main problem is whenever blood enters or goes through a capillary um, the consequence of that is the pressure actually drops okay so with a single circulatory system the heart will beat once and then the blood will just do one circuit of the body okay so that's what it means by the circulatory uh, a single circulatory system um, with the fish it has a gill circulatory system that's just the blood vessels that go to the gills and it has a systemic circulation which basically means body that's the circulation that goes around the body so it's everything on this diagram uh, but not the gill region so uh, uh, everywhere down the bottom half of the diagram is the systemic circulatory system so um, when the blood goes to the gills um, it will have a drop in pressure so the pressure will drop and as a consequence of that the blood speed will reduce now this makes the circuit this single circulatory uh, system very inefficient because as it passes through every set of capillaries not just the ones in the gills also the ones down here in the body or the systemic circulation uh, the pressure will carry on dropping so each capillary uh, set of capillaries will drop the pressure and it will also then drop uh, the, the 
uh, speed of the blood. So with this one then, the delivery of oxygen becomes inefficient because the blood flow is so slow. So if I just write that in then. Um, okay, so I've added that in. Uh, the delivery of oxygen to the body organs will be very inefficient. Um, now, in addition to that, um, we need to talk about the delivery um, of things like nutrients as well, because every time the blood passes through um, an organ, which is where the capillaries are, um, the blood will also lose uh, nutrients as well. So as well as the speed of the blood uh, reducing and therefore the oxygen being delivered is inefficient, you also get the loss of nutrients as well. So the reason why this um, is so uh, bad within a fish, it's because of the arrangement of the organs where the capillaries are and the actual flow of blood. So I want to draw out another diagram to show what's known as a, um, a series flow of blood. Uh, and hopefully that will explain um, why oxygen is inefficient being delivered, the pressure drops and the nutrient levels drop as well. Okay, so this little diagram here um, shows what's called um, a series arrangement of the organs and the blood flow. I've just uh, put in the heart, the gills and some body regions, the head, the liver, the gut, the trunk, the kidneys and the tail. So basically all of these organs are in what's known as series. All right, they're in series. So what happens is if we start off at the heart, here we have high pressure, okay, and we have the, the fast blood flow. Now, as the blood goes through the gills, what we get is a drop in pressure, there, and that means we also get a drop in um, blood speed. and also a drop then in nutrients as well. So all of this um, reducing of pressure, reducing of blood speed, reducing of nutrients actually uh, occurs as the blood goes through each body region. So as the blood goes through the head, you'll get another drop in pressure, another drop in blood speed, and another drop in nutrient levels. Uh, and that continues at each point along uh, this uh, circulatory system until you get back to the heart and then when the heart beats again after one circuit the blood will come out of the heart under high pressure and the blood flow will be rapid. So this is quite a, a disadvantage uh, for a circulatory system having everything in series that's basically one after the other all right like a single file arrangement of the uh, body regions. So um, again, um, even though it's inefficient, it's inefficient compared to the uh, circulatory systems of other animals, but this still works for the fish. And there's a reason why this is okay for the fish. And it's to do with the fact that uh, the fish is cold blooded. All right. In fact, every orga, uh, organism we've talked about so far has been cold-blooded. Um, now, I'm going to mention more about that when we look at the human circulatory system. All right, But there's an important link here with the ability of an organism to generate its own body temperature, or not, in the case of cold-blooded organisms, and the type of circulatory system that they have. So I'll come back to that one later. Um, but uh, that really is the circulatory system for the fish. Uh, everything you need to know uh, is there. The next organism we're going to look at uh, is an amphibian. 
and the amphibian i've put it in because it marks a kind of transition point between a single circulatory system and a true fully functional double circulatory system so it's kind of an intermediate between the two uh, which i hope will help you understand um, the advantage of having a double uh, circulatory system this is the uh, the diagram of a frog or an amphibian uh, circulatory system now um, <clears throat> the frog is also cold-blooded so we better make a, a note of that it's cold-blooded now as I said earlier this is a kind of uh, an intermediate between um, a single and a true double circulatory system uh, this isn't a fully functional double circulatory system but it's almost there so I just want to take you briefly through it um, <clears throat> the first thing here is there's a pulmonary circulation now pulmonary means lungs so frogs have lungs um, which oxygenate the blood so I want to explain in this section the colouring of uh, these blood vessels. Any vessel that's coloured in blue is known as deoxygenated blood. Okay, and anything in red is known as oxygenated uh, blood. Okay, now in this diagram uh, we've got kind of a purplish um, coloration now that is known as mixed blood so there's um, oxygenated and deoxygenated blood mixing together and that's the problem with this frog circulatory system we can see that it has a heart but this time it has a three chambered heart so you have two upper atriums and you have a central ventricle now that's what's causing the problem here because if we uh, look at the flow of blood you've got uh, blood going to the lungs it gets uh, oxygenated so the the color goes dark red and then it goes back into the atrium and then it gets squirted into the ventricle along with deoxygenated blood so in here you get the mixing of the blood in the uh, central ventricle now that is a problem because it means you have less oxygen being transported around the body okay but there is a little advantage to this and it's the fact that blood is released from the heart and goes around the body at a higher pressure so the fact that the blood returns to the heart from the lungs which it didn't do in the fish so this returns back to the heart and it's um, given an extra boost of pressure that forces it around the body so you actually have a high pressure here okay uh, so that is, uh, you know, an advantage. The low oxygen levels is a disadvantage. Okay. Um, so that's, I'm not going to say much more about this because you don't technically need to know about the amphibian. But I think it'll be a good comparison now for when we look at the double circulatory system of a mammal. Um, so that uh, is all i want to say about uh, the frog so um the mammalian then um double closed circulatory system uh this is what it looks like um it's uh, got a four chambered heart this time so you'll have two upper chambers called the atriums two lower chambers called the ventricles and there's two sides to the heart there's a left and a right side now the convention when drawing the heart is to draw it as though it's in the chest of someone so when you when you're viewing a drawing of it it's like you're looking at someone 
Um, so that means it's in um, the reverse order, if you like. So what I've done, I've put an R here uh, because that represents the right side of the heart. Uh, it appears on a diagram as to be on the left, but it's not. So you must call it the right side of the heart. Then obviously the other side is the left side of the heart. So please be aware of that. It's drawn as though you were looking at someone. Uh, the heart would appear like that in someone's chest. So um, there's the, the sides of the heart. Now to have a true double uh, circulatory system you actually need in effect two hearts and that's what we've got we've got two hearts that are actually joined together we have the right side of the heart and we have a left side of the heart now the right side of the heart if you look at the color in the vessels and in the chambers it's all blue so the right side of the heart is there to pump blood um, from the body so the the blood returns from the systemic circulation to the right side of the heart and then the blood is pumped to the lungs. The blood then returns to the other side of the heart, which is the left side, uh, fully oxygenated and then the blood is pumped then again around the body. So that's the only way you can get a true double circulatory system. Uh, you have one side of the heart that deals with deoxygenated blood and the left side of the heart that deals with oxygenated blood. So uh, the advantages of that again is if we look at the left side of the heart, blood is going to be pumped around the body from the left side. So it's going to be pumped under high pressure. So even though the blood has gone through the lung capillaries, the pressure will drop, it'll go to a low pressure, as, as it does when it goes through any capillary. But the blood enters the left side of the heart and is forced out under higher pressure. So you increase the pressure uh, on the left side of the heart. That means you have a, a fast uh, blood flow, uh, which means oxygen uh, is delivered uh, very efficiently. So oxygen is delivered fast plus efficiently around the body. Now the pressure is high but uh, as we'll discuss again uh, as the blood gets further and further away from the heart the pressure does actually reduce Okay, so the highest pressure you will get is within um, this part of the um, circulatory system here in this blood vessel. Um, the other thing is the organs are arranged in a parallel fashion, uh, unlike the uh, fish. So if I quickly draw that out, you've got the heart here. Uh, if we have the lungs here, um, under the heart then we could have uh, the liver, no we'll have the gut there. Okay so I've drawn out a really qu a quick sketch of how uh, the organs are arranged uh, in, in a parallel fashion. Uh, we'll talk more about the arrangement in another video. But basically, as uh, if we just look at the left side of the heart, which is here, as blood comes out of the heart, it runs down a blood vessel and then you get a branch off. So you get a branch off that goes to the gut, the liver and the rest of the body. So because you get this branching here, it doesn't affect the level of oxygen or nutrients or pressure as the blood is flowing down because the blood as it goes down the body is not going through organs uh, so it's not going through capillaries so the pressure uh, ultimately is not reducing as much as as that in the fish okay it will reduce a, a bit as I said earlier but not as much as in the fish so this is known as a parallel arrangement where 
the organs are sort of on top of each other, if you like, one above the other, rather than in a in a single file arrangement. Uh, so this makes the uh, the transport of blood uh, far more uh, efficient. Now, um, let's tackle the aspect of the warm-blooded uh, situation. Now, all mammals and, in fact, birds are all warm-blooded. Now, warm-blooded organisms have a far higher metabolic uh, demand. Um, that means they have a greater... Uh, requirement for oxygen so they need an efficient circulatory system to deliver the oxygen to meet the metabolic demands of the organism so the major use of the oxygen uh, for warm-blooded animals is that of respiration respiration not only produces ATP energy but it also generates heat which makes organisms warm-blooded, and that requires a lot of oxygen. And that's why mammals and birds have to have this double uh, circulatory system. Without it, we, we wouldn't get enough oxygen being delivered uh, to meet our metabolic demands. OK, so uh, on the right-hand side here, uh, I've just written the important points about the warm-blooded nature of... Um, mammals and birds uh, just mentioning now about you only uh, only a double closed circulatory system can deliver oxygen efficiently to meet the metabolic demands of the organism so that um, completes this video on circulatory systems so if you complete the activities um, in the workbook um, and hopefully um, this has um, helped you understand the circulatory systems a bit better.